Greetings, my name is Mira Bauzuk and I'm from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. And I am Kamila Kokotkanikua from the Gdańsk University of Technology in Poland. We're proud members of the NOL, the European Network of Open Education Librarians. We're excited to present to you the seventh episode of our series, which focuses on the UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources, OER. In this episode, we're introducing one of the five OE bytes, each of which focuses on one of the UNESCO OER recommendations action areas. Our bites are designed to be brief and easy to understand, giving you a delicious taste of open education. In this episode, we'd like to dive deeper and explore the fourth area of action addressed by the recommendation, namely nurturing the creation of sustainability models for OER. What does this entail? And what should the member states do to support and encourage the development of such models according to UNESCO? The recommendation suggests that member states should support the development of OER sustainability models that are comprehensive, inclusive, and integrated. To that end, member states are recommended to implement a range of measures. They include reviewing and simplifying existing public procurement rules, policies, and regulations to simplify the process of procuring quality goods and services. This should facilitate the creation, translation, adaptation, storage, sharing, archiving, preservation, and maintenance of OER. In addition, member states are also encouraged to catalyze sustainability models. Think about traditional funding sources, but even more importantly, also non-traditional reciprocity-based resource mobilization, such as partnerships, networking, donations, crowdfunding, and membership fees. It is also important to promote and raise awareness of value-added OER models across institutions and countries, and to enact regulatory frameworks that support the development of OER products and related services that align with national and international standards. Additionally, it is crucial to foster the faithful linguistic translation of open licenses, provide implementation mechanisms, and encourage feedback from stakeholders to improve OER. Finally, member states and educational institutions are encouraged to optimize their budgets and funds in order to source, develop, and, imp and improve OER. This can be done more sustainability through interinstitutional, national, regional, and international collaborations. Is there any place for academic libraries in continuing in contributing to nurturing the creation of sustainability models for OER? To answer this question, let's once again consider the findings of the recently published Spark Europe 2022 survey report. Open Education and European Libraries of Higher Education, Implementing the UNESCO OER Recommendation. The report highlights two critical issues related to the fourth area of action, human and financial resources. The survey revealed that 43% of libraries, which amounts to 44 out of 102 responses, have only one or even fewer staff members dedicated to working on OER. Furthermore, 28 respondents have no personnel assigned to this task at all at their academic libraries. Regarding grants or seed funding for the creation of OER, only 12% of libraries have access to such financing schemes. In contrast, 54% of libraries rely on their own budget for OER activities, such as promoting their use and encouraging their creation. The survey respondents identified a lack of resources, particularly funding and staff, as one of the most significant challenges to open education and OER adoption and implementation. The scarcity of resources is a major obstacle to creating a sustainable OER ecosystem. Taking this into consideration, we would like to suggest some ideas you as librarians could pursue at the library and at institutional levels. When investing in textbooks, ebooks, or knowledge platforms, consider their costs, revenues, and their reach. Discuss with stakeholders and decision makers if this is the best use of taxpayers' money and explore alternatives. In consultation with IT services, encourage more conscious decisions to ensure some infrastructure stays community-led and controlled. When choosing the infrastructure to support your open education efforts, 
consider using open infrastructure and a connected open network of technical tools and services that are community-led and fed. Some examples are Open Journal System, Wakelet, European Open Science Cloud, Moodle, Merlot, and others. For greater return on investments in publicly funded outputs, reuse and adapt existing materials, involve students in the process, or create high-quality OER at your university, such as open textbooks. Show the importance of grant programs and cross-institutional collaborations with successful implementations, such as open courseware by Two Delft, Anatomy Tool, OpenStax, Libertex, and Navoika. Such projects can develop new sustainable models for the future. Engage with communities and community-driven OER projects to enhance the sustainability of open materials created within such initiatives. Some examples of this can be found in community-developed materials in the Netherlands. Build and engage in networks to help keep costs down and make sure that work is meaningful and community-led. Such networks as the NOL can help build capacity in the area of OER and become a breeding ground for ideas and shared services. Dedicate a small part of the budget for annual membership contributions to support and sustain open education-related membership associations. After all, such associations will work on open on your behalf. Explore crowdfunding, creating a fund or a grant program, and propose a competition for the creation, co-creation, reuse, and adaptation of OER for teachers and students. Create an institutional or faculty-wide incubator where teachers could describe and share the OER ideas they would like to submit for seed funding. This approach might be especially conductive to brewing high-quality OER initiatives. Consider dedicating manpower to open education projects, starting with half a day per week as the first small step. You could later proceed with upskilling the staff working with OER and exploring the possibility of creating new budget lines within existing structures or programs at your institution. The more skilled, the more mature the resources in-house, the more sustainable your service. Explore regional and national funding schemes available for setting up OER pilots and initiatives. For instance, open an online education incentive scheme in the Netherlands and address sustainability issues early on in the project development process. Find out if your university can match or supplement external funding by providing financial or human resources, as it is often a requirement of external funding schemes. And finally, seek local applications of global solutions that identify areas where costs can be saved or resources can be efficiently sourced or shared, and where a more sustainable open education ecosystem can be developed and maintained. In this episode, we focus on fourth area of action, which revolves around nurturing the creation of sustainability models for OER. By giving you numerous examples of how support for sustainable models for creating OER can be obtained, we want to demonstrate that even small libraries with limited budgets and staff can still contribute to the development of OER. Thank you for listening to the seventh bite of open education. This one was the last in the series, and we hope that each bite along the way brought you closer to learning about and understanding the UNESCO OER recommendation. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.